پادکست Welcome again to the Kiss the Future Summit, uh, the first AI summit happening in Sarajevo, uh, in the National Theater uh, of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, currently in my studio is Mr. Uh, Raiman Gorschmidt. Uh, he is the managing director of the Teletracking. Uh, I will ask you uh, to speak more about the company itself. Yep. But uh, what I want to emphasize is that uh, now we are going to speak about uh, AI in the healthcare industry. And I believe that we will get a lot of good information from Mr. Yeah. Raimar. <laughs> yeah, thank you, David. And it's a pleasure to be here yeah. and it's really honor for me. Um, and I really enjoy being here at Sarajevo. It's such an energetic um, city. So I really enjoy being here. And just um, some words regarding Teletracking. Yeah. Teletracking is a US-based company. It's family owned and it's located in Pittsburgh, um, which is um, close to um, Chicago, more or less. And um, I'm the general manager for the Teletracking GmbH, the German subdaughter of, of Teletracking. And um, Teletracking will expand to emerging markets. Um, they have a very good um, market um, um, summary um, at the US, for example. And also they do business um, at the UK market, for example. And in the last year, The first project in Germany was successfully delivered mm -hmm. and it showed incredible results um, to the hospital manager regarding support of logistics and also um, base of AI, for example. And um, now I'm here um, attending um, the conference and learning a lot regarding AI usage, um, what to do with it, and also give some insights um, for the healthcare markets so regarding AI. I have a lot of questions uh, for you. Uh, especially because I believe uh, that, uh, and there are some, some astonishing data uh, regarding the, the use of the AI, but uh, I will uh, go back to one event that I've been there, where the professor of uh, university in Sarajevo was speaking about some of the future uh, happenings that are already happening in the Western world, meaning yep. people putting uh, kind of chips inside of them that are doing tracking of their overall health, yeah. uh, their blood, blood sugar, yeah. uh, trying to find some genetic yeah. uh, diseases, disturbances. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when he showed on his PowerPoint presentations, he showed the real examples and real reports. Yeah. And my first, my first uh, impression was I was scared. <laughs> <laughs> But because uh, it, was, it was scary for me to have all of these data Uh, about myself, but a couple of days after, I was thinking about it, thinking about it. But then I realized maybe it would be even clever to do it for myself because then I would anticipate yep. some of the issues that are maybe getting to me. So this is the first thing I want to speak about yeah, is uh, how real it is that uh, we are living in the times when we can fully track ourselves. Yes, I mean, this is a very... Um hot topic i mean yeah. um, it's more or less um, to measure yourself yeah. and i think um yeah, let's let's jump back 20 years yeah. ago um we got ill we went to a doctor and he treated us in a specific way and hopefully we were getting healthy again mm -hmm. but with this new technology um to measure at home blood pressure um, um sugar in the blood and so on we can predict our health Mm -hmm. We start to behave much more healthier. We some type, some persons um, have some um, tracker, mm -hmm. 10,000 um, steps per day, for example. So um, we have the ability to keep ourselves much healthier because we generate the data. And some persons, of course, are very, they want to measure everything yeah. in terms of then I can more or less predict everything. And of course, we also have the persons, they are not interested in terms of I don't want to know it. And so everyone is in between somewhere. And this is always a, a, a personal thing. But I think the, the good thing with, with this data collection, when you go to a doctor, you already generate or you have data already um, that you can bring to the table to the doctor in terms of there's an indication um, what happened regarding progress, for example. And this, of course, um, will um, help um, the doctor to um, generate a diagnostics much quicker based on, okay, this sounds like it could be wrong here and so on. 
Otherwise, he has to start from scratch in terms of I have something here and then, okay, where do we start? So I think with um, some data that are collected at home, the doctor already has an advantage in terms of we can see whether we can use the data. Uh, my, my concern is uh, are we there yet in terms of the technology itself? So in terms of the trackers, uh, the, all of the gadgets, do they represent the real data? Uh, are they sustainable? These kind of stuff are maybe my concern in terms of whether they are going to give the, the, the right data. Yep. I think um, we can call it the quality of data more or less. Yeah. Um, I mean, um, if you have um, a device to measure blood pressure at home, the doctor has to know whether you're able to use it in a correct way. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, garbage yeah. in, garbage out. And also um, some de devices suggest that they measure it in a very professional way, but it's just, an <laughs> it's like this, you know? Yeah. And um, this will um, bring the future to add um, more precision to the data. Mm -hmm. But at the end, um, it's still data that is collected at home as an indicator, mm -hmm. but you shouldn't consider it in terms of, based on this data, you will get yeah. this diagnostic. Yeah. Uh, what I wanted also, uh, to discuss uh, with you, in fact, is um, uh, when the, oh, the whole GPT thing happened back yeah. a couple of years ago, yeah. then there started to be different kind of tests and stuff, and uh, some of the AI tools were used uh, in order to do the diagnostics after, after they got the data. And compared to the analytics of the doctors and what AI did, uh, it showed that AI has better, better um, symptoms check and better diagnostics yep. done. Uh, how can are, are we able to believe the diagnostics done by AI, or should we use them uh, as a helper, as an assistant? How, how how does it affect yep. the doctors? Yeah, I think um, um, the doctors get an additional tool. To support them because what most people um, don't really um, know every second year the healthcare knowledge um, doubles yeah. and a doctor who studied 10 years ago and is practicing since then yeah. he literally he can't keep up with all the new diagnostic yeah. opportunities treatment opportunities drugs and so on so ai will be a wonderful additional tool for the doctors and I would quote um, that the doctor with AI support that they use, they'll be the better doctors compared to them mm -hmm. who refuse to use AI, mm -hmm. for example. And so we should be open um, mm -hmm. to use AI in terms of it's an additional thing. Mm -hmm. There will be probably, um, at least I expect it, yeah. never um, be um, the, a, a moment when you just enter your data yeah. and chat GBT or however yeah, we name yeah. it, um, it will generate a diagnostic and then based on this you'll get a treatment. Yeah. There will be always some experienced doctor who will um, check the result in terms of is it really the right um, decision in terms of preventing a failure. Yeah. Because my experience and my um, feeling tells me that if we, for example, if we freeze all diagnostics in this year, here in Bosnia-Herzegovina, and use AI in terms of we'll check them, there will be maybe some cases where AI will be wrong in terms of yeah. we need someone um, to verify yeah. the result. Mm -hmm. But I think the AI will definitely have a higher number of the diagnostic from the doctor was wrong. Mm -hmm. It should be more, 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 more. And um, this will be a higher number compared to the mistakes by an yeah. AI made. And mm -hmm. so with the um, still um, approval by a doctor or even a nurse, yeah. for example, I think we can then lower the um, number of wrong decisions or support by the AI. But I think several doctors will be in the future. Wow, I didn't think of that. Yeah. But that sounds like that's, yeah. that's the problem. And mm -hmm. here I think that's why it's so important to um, create AI support in the medicine. Yeah. Well, uh, in fact, uh, when discussing with uh, friends that, that have some issue, had some issues with their health or the wrong diagnostics, uh, I, I heard a good sentence. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend tells me, 
uh, every doctor, in fact, is looking your problem through the eyes from his or her specialization. Yes. And basically, the dentist will always look you through your yeah. teeth. So probably will not think about your cardiac problem and stuff, and so on and so on. So I believe that is maybe the main use to, 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 to give help to the doctor to think about scenarios which he is not specialized, maybe. Um, you're absolutely right. And I mean, the specialization, yeah. I mean, it started probably 100 years ago. Yeah. Before that, uh, the doctor had to know everything. Yeah. And um, the specialization um, today in Germany, it takes eight years to be a full yeah. doctor when you have to can say, I am a um, 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 doctor for cardiology, for example. Yeah. And so um, by that time, you literally forgot what you had yeah. when you had um, this yeah. study um, and you studied medicine and yeah. um, you had a general approach to the um, treatments, let's say. And so I think um, the AI in the medical um, way um, will improve the diagnostics and the treatment. And what I also think that the AI will um, improve, or let's say, um, make the um, healthcare market more efficient, mm -hmm. especially hospitals, when it comes to logistics. You know, yeah. in logistic um, areas of the hospitals, we still have processes like 50 years ago, mm -hmm. but maybe we have some sort of smartphone and so on. But I think with some support with AI in the logistic mm -hmm. part, we will be more efficient. Mm -hmm. Patient won't have to wait so long to get an appointment, for example. Mm -hmm. And then with the additional support in terms of improvement of the medicine and the mm -hmm. diagnostics or treatment, this will be an overall improvement for the society of Bosnia-Herzegovina. Yeah. Yes, and uh, definitely we, we are experiencing uh, great problems in, in our, in our uh, healthcare industry because of the different levels of the government, uh, the different uh, jur jurisdictions mm -hmm. and uh, what's the worst thing about it is that throughout all of these years of not people not understanding yeah. uh, the, 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 the Medicare, uh, we forgot who is in fact responsible for the issues. So uh, I truly believe that uh, strategic thinking from the Bosnian side and from the government side should be engaging AI into the into the healthcare. Yeah. Definitely, I'm a um, um, big advocate for AI and yeah. when being on the stage, I said, um, use it. I mean, yeah. we open a new page in medical yeah. treatment and AI will be more or less the ink, yeah. you know, um, take the pen, create it. You will improve the medical the, um, treatment. Yeah. Um, we will have better diagnostic radiology, pathology, AI. Yeah. That's was such a big step um, yeah. towards a better diagnostics and yeah. then if you also use AI when it comes to logistics, you have better resource usage, for example. Yeah. This means the patient will be treated quicker, don't have to wait so long, yeah. and this will then generate um, a much healthier population. Yeah. And if we add our trackers to that, I think we'll increase here yeah. the, <laughs> yes. the li um, life expectancy yeah. definitely. Diabetes is gone, all of these <laughs> yeah, I mean, are gone. But, yeah. but it, it will help us um, to, yeah. to, to become healthier. And you see um, lots of um, newspapers regarding eat healthy, yes. you know, all the things. Um, but it's based because you now can measure yes. it. And then with the support with AI in the hospital, um, we'll have a more efficient healthcare system. Yeah. And it's all like, it's, it's, it's all like uh, circles that are circling around once, once yeah. and another. For example, uh, currently, uh, the big trend is uh, that people are going either running or fitness. Uh, gyms are full, full of people. People are practicing. They realize because of their watches, because of their yeah. applications in their phones, they realize that, that they cannot sit yeah. uh, for the whole day and just not doing anything. Uh, there were different times, uh, even when I was not born, when people were living in the uh, mountains, in the villages, where naturally people were eating healthier food, better quality food, uh, they were uh, on their on their feet for the whole day. People mm -hmm. were doing these kind of physical works. Yeah. Uh, back then, it was not necessary for you to be active because yeah, your life was. Right. But uh, today we are living uh, in the world where chicken that we eat is probably full of antibiotics and steroids. Yeah. Uh, carrots are not the carrots that we ate somewhere back. Yes. So we have to compensate. Yeah. And I believe that AI is there to help us compensate and adapt uh, to all of to all of these stuff that we are we are putting into ourselves. I think you're absolutely right, and you know probably um, 
me and you, we sit more or less this, the whole day. Yes. And my um, watch then reminds me <laughs> to some sort of um, walk around. And yesterday I visited the wonderful city, old town here of Sarajevo. And my hotel is a bit outside and I decided let's walk home. I mean, it was a beautiful evening and I said, okay, some steps on my yeah. watch um, will make me much happier. So um, I used the time. Before um, we didn't have that um, yeah. opportunity, I would use uh, public transportation or a cab yeah. or a taxi, for example. So it helps us, this technology, um, to be healthier in yeah. terms of not to become ill, yeah. to get a disease, especially chronic diseases. Mm -hmm. And we feel better, yes. we look better. <laughs> I mean, hey, and the thing is, I, um, um, from my side, If we combine the data um, later, currently it's still very um, focused to some speciality software and so on. But um, it will help us um, to stay healthier. And when yeah. we get ill, um, then we have data where the doctors can build on and can yeah. say, okay, there are the first in indications. And so um, they will start um, with, yeah. with a better diagnostics uh, much earlier. Let's live longer and kiss the future. <laughs> yes, kiss the future, I would say. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. You too.